My lie lay there, expanding into the silence. Finally, she spoke once more. Get him back, Aldo. Do what you have to do to get him back, comprende? See, I had said. I had been about to tell her how much I loved her when the dial tone hit me like a blow in the gut. Do what you have to do to get him back, she had said. So, I had. The Americano began to sob. He was several feet to my left, and I could feel a shudder of bodies as, he turned, as they turned towards him. The stress in me, Ted, was too much for him, as I knew in my heart it would be. He, too, had packets taped to him, as did the other like me who was returning to her family, a young woman who had been picked up in a raid at a processing plant in Illinois and deported. She had the longest way to travel, but her determination was that of a mother who had to return to her children. If I had to wager, it would be on her. If I had bet on the Americano, I would have lost. I saw what would happen before he felt the teeth sink into his shoulder. A muerto, who reminded me of a shopkeeper I had known in Nogales who sold overpriced rugs to touristas, began to chew on the Americano as if he were a rack of prime meat. First one bite, then the other. The Americano screamed, the sound barely registering to Mr. Groans among us as the herd once again pressed itself into the fence. The obstruction before us began to shriek in protest, reinforced metal backed by rebars and steel pilings. It was no match for the combined press of the dead. With a metallic scream, a section tore free and gave way. The first row of muertos stumbled to the gap as those behind trampled them to the ground. Limbs were crushed and broken as those who had fallen sought to stand while the others above them continued to shuffle forward. I was far enough back to keep my balance. The groans increased as the muertos found the way ahead open. Like the cry of cattle about to stampede, they raised their heads to the sky and moaned. I groaned with them and in my lament felt compassion for those who were dead and about to die once more. The unfairness of it struck me, even though I could do nothing about it. That is what made me human, I suppose, the realization of what was being lost. After the fence was breached, I lost sight of the Americano. We surged forward into a flat plain. I had been here before. The terrain and location of the black sand almost ensured that the herd would end up in the same position along the border. To our left and right, metal walls had been constructed like chutes in a cattle yard, guiding us onward to where I could see the arroyo begin. We shuffled and lurched forward. As always, I wondered if the Muertos knew where they were going. Did they have a goal, or were they just as mindless as they seemed? What were they hungry for? Then it happened. I stumbled and fell to my knees. I was so caught up in my own thoughts that I had forgotten that I was supposed to be mindless and dead. A clumsy foot planted upon my back drove me to the ground. Another struck the back of my head, and I must have blacked out for a moment, which is when I dreamed of Aldo Ray. Not me, but my famous namesake. Tall, where I was short. Handsome, where I was average, bordering on ugly. Blonde, where I was black hair, and white, where I was brown. My mother had given me the name of her favorite American actor and hero in the hope that I would grow up to be like him, in the hope that his name would give me a head start in the American dream. He had starred with James Coburn, John Wayne, Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn, and everyone who was anyone. With a name like that, how could I lose? He had been a hero during World War II, serving as a frogman in the Pacific. With a past like that, how could I not succeed? Yet, as I told my mother, I could fail too easily because a name does not make the man. She could have called me George Washington, but in the end, I would always be reminded that Washington was not and had never been Mexican. And there I made the truth of it. I came to my senses with a wetness down my back. It burned as if someone had scraped the skin away. I wanted to touch there and see if I'd been bitten, but I dared not. Any movement that was not that of Muerto would doom me to the same fate as the Sicario and the Americano. So I lurched to my feet again, using the press of bodies to propel me upwards and forward. My head ached and my eyes felt dull. One of the packets had fallen loose and now hung free from my body, occasionally slapping my side as I stumbled onward. Soon the steel walls were replaced with the sandy dirt embankments of the arroyo that rose up to, the, to twice the height of the tallest man. During the monsoon season, the rain collected and rushed through the natural channels seeking low ground and washing everything away in its path. Then it was dangerous, but not as dangerous as it was now. Now the water was replaced by the muertos, who were no less a natural force than the storms that filled this conduit. I noticed a change in my stride. My legs felt like they were no longer my own. The dull ache that had gripped them a day ago was now gone to be replaced by a feeling of weightlessness, as if the limbs were no longer there. Suddenly a gunshot rang out from far ahead. I knew it to be the beginning of the end and the most dangerous part of the trek. The border patrol, fuck them all, were taking aim at us, using their high power rifles to shoot us like chickens locked in a coop. My hands lost their feelings as well. It was as if they belonged to someone else. More gunshots followed the first. Although I could not see what was happening, I had witnessed it before on my first trip. 
bullets were ripping through the heads. Blood and bone was flying everywhere as marksmen found that sweet spot in the brain of the muertos that caused instant and permanent death. The fear I had was a fear only a living person could have. I had hope and prayed that I could not fall into the sights of a true happy border guard. I lost the feeling in my arms around the same time the minefield came into view. More than a hundred small rectangles were placed on the ground facing upwards. I knew that they were called claymores and fired thousands of ball bearings towards their targets, ripping them apart in an instant. As the first rank of Moreto shuffled forward, night became sky as a row of mines were triggered, shredding flesh. The surge halted for a moment as the flashes of light blinded the Moretos. I think it scared them a little too. Yet, still we pressed ahead. I could no longer feel my body. It felt like I was walking into a dream where I moved but did not know how. A thought began to form in my brain, but it was hard to concentrate on such things. I groaned and for the first time realized that I was hungry. The muerto in front of me had long ago rotted away, scraps of gray and green skin flopping as it moved. It did not appeal to me, but then I remembered the woman. I knew that she was somewhere forward and to the right of me. I willed my body to move in that direction and began to jostle and push my way through the pressing mess of bodies. The front ranks continued their forward momentum. This time they were allowed past the first two, the next two rows of mines until there were hundreds of muertos in the field. Then as the mines were detonated, a supernova of sound and fury tore them apart sending them skyward only to rain back down in a shower of body pieces and bone fragments. I groaned again. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I knew I still had a son to save. I remembered the faraway words of being supposed to when she told me to do what I had to do. But I was so hungry, so insatiably hungry. Instinctively, I sat up the woman I knew to be alive. Had the muertos known about her, they would be looking as well. But it was my secret, and she was mine. When she came into view, the realization finally struck me. A burst of rational thoughts sparked through my dying brain cells as I now understood that I had somehow been bitten, perhaps when I was down, perhaps when I was not looking. A tiny part of me, that part that was still on a motto, screamed for the change to stop. It begged for a chance to save my child, who would most assuredly die without my delivery of the packet taped to my body. Yet it cried out for a second chance to be human, but the rest of me that had already died ignored my entreaty and cared only for its unholy appetite. No longer was my fuel the need to save my son. No longer was I to be Aldo Ray, the hero of the movies. Now I was monster, hunger beyond hunger, and eager to stick my teeth into this woman with, that, with whom I had shared a conversation before all this had started. Do you really think we can make it, she had asked. Piece of cake, I had said. Being dead is the easiest thing. It's been alive this hard. We had laughed at the joke and covered ourselves in pig's blood and waited for the herd to cross over us. At the time, it all seemed like no big deal. I pushed the last few of my fellow muertos and staggered up beside her. She turned her head minutely, recognizing me out of the corner of her eye. But I was not what she expected. Her gaze widened as she realized what I had become. I could see the terror in her understanding. She would never make it back to her family. She tried to back away as I leaned towards her. The hunger was overpowering. I was so close, close enough to take away her face, but instead I lightly kissed her cheek. That surprised us both. And soon she was swept away in the press of bodies. For a brief moment, humanity sparked again inside me. The last thing I remembered about myself was who I was, my name, and who my mother had wanted me to be. I was Aldo Ray. And then the hunger took me over until like the rest, I exploded in a shower of light and heat, and as I ran down in the desert, I finally knew where the black sand came from. I knew from where it was born. It was from a hunger far older and far deeper than any of us, and it was growing, and it would soon take over us all. And I became one with the land, and was greeted by my fellow, mur by my fellow muertos, as they would too rain down and join me in the arroyo, a monster of the dead, and us flowing nowhere forever. Hey, thank you very much.